Uh, it's often said that the reason people watch uh, Country Fathers is because it saves them from having to go for a walk, because uh, they, can, they can watch us uh, getting wet and uh, hearing buzzards rather than having to experience it for themselves. I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure it is genuine an encouragement to get out there and to talk about the importance of getting out there and what uh, the natural world, particularly the national parks, can do for our health is uh, Dr. William Bird from Intelligent Health. Dr. Bird. So it's a real pl pleasure to be here, and I feel it's been a long time coming that we are finding this whole aspect of nature and health being talked about, not just into places like here from the environment, but we're now getting it from ministers, from pretty much every director of public health, we're getting it in the NHS completely. So exciting times, but... The big question is, how do we connect it together? We know the science now. I'm going to go through a bit more of the science, I'm afraid. So don't feel you've, if you had a few drinks last night, you may just be kind of blurry as you see some of these slides coming through. You might remember some of those things there. But it's important to know how the science is now fairly con solid and that now we need to know about the delivery. Um, human beings, what are we? Do you know we're 43% bacteria, OK? By the number of cells in our body, we are 43% bacteria, two kilograms of bacteria in our gut. On our palms, 150 species. In our gut, 1,000 species of bacteria. You'd be quite happy to have 1,000 species of um, animals, birds in your parks, 1,000 species. So we are in ourselves a little national park. We're a biome here <laughs> inside, all walking around, not being looked after very well. And funnily enough, we've kind of deviated from what our kind of, well, how we should be looked after. So let's have a look. Um, I use this because I just feel we just need to get a reference point. Um, about 100,000 years is we haven't really changed very much. And uh, starting off in East Africa, they're moving around. But we've been hunter-gatherers. So if you take a 1,000 years to an hour, it's four days, OK, 100 hours. Nothing really changed until just 10 hours ago when we first started the agriculture. So pretty much we were still outdoors. We were still moving around. We were still connected. We still had groups. Then we came to civilizations, but they were 4,000, about only four hours ago. And then that big change just about nine minutes ago when the car industry and we started to come into towns and we started to have an indoor life much more and physical activity started to disappear. But the really big change has been 80 seconds ago. And that is the technology age of the screen age. And that has been dramatic in that now we've got sedentary behavior for up to 14 hours a day, people locked indoors, people disconnected and people becoming lonely. So if you think about, um, oh yes, I've got my sponsor. So my sponsor is Fitterix, I have to mention them. This is this um, drug, which is going to be a massive, incredible drug. I mean, I didn't expect you to understand all that. It's just one of those small print things you have to put on there. Faulty immune system, it does, sorts all that out. Antioxidants, releases oxidative stress. Krebs cycle, anyone remember Krebs cycle? Um, prolongs life of cells, actually makes us yeah, age less quickly. Um, actually makes us stop aging, um, reduces blood pressure, all that kind of It's just one drug. Okay, so sorry I had to put that up there. Uh, <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> Fitterix, also known as going for a walk. Okay. So all of those things I've just put in there, all of those things are one thing, walking. Outdoor. This is four times strength. Anyone know why this is four times strength, this one? This, is, this, this picture just shows an incredible power of this Fitterix. Togetherness, people, nature, physical activity, and the one I hadn't remembered, but everyone puts their hand up, sunlight. We always just say, get out of the sun, it's dangerous, cause you melanomas. Actually, it's the best thing for loads of things. Vitamin D, we're getting deficiency, you're getting rickets now, which we haven't had since Victorian times. So four times strength. Fitterix. So if we cut physical activity and we put people outdoors and we gave people that sunshine and put people together, you have got the most powerful drug that we would ever have known about. And what we need to find out is how do we get there? So if you think of us as a hunter-gatherer, let's not think of us as anything other than a hunter-gatherer. 
um, we are social animals. So when we become isolated, we become ill. We become stressed. When we disconnect ourselves from nature, we become stressed because our whole body hardwired is to look for water, shelter, trees, comfort. We know that from house prices in places when you go out for holidays. Everything in our body is hardwired. People can't ignore that. And books are now being written, and we've got fantastic um, knowledge about that. And then having purpose. If you don't have a purpose in life when you wake up in the morning, your health is particularly bad. So you can put the five ways to well-being at the bottom there. But this is the grounding of health. Um, and where are we? Well, we've got loneliness, not just in that older person sitting out the window, but in children, at schools, at work, people who are lonely. You've got disconnection from nature, so you've got hostile environments, and you've got this lack of autonomy, lack of control. And the further you go into more deprived communities, the stronger those problems become. And that causes fear and that chronic stress. And chronic stress, I'm just going to do my science bit now, whiz through that, because I'm, I don't want to take anything away from Georgina's talk when she comes on in next, because she's going to say how you can do this. Um, chronic stress actually stops people from being active. If you think, um, when you're chronically stressed, and that's because we've got that disconnection from nature, and we've got loneliness as well, and that, then our body is saying, right, I've got to do something to stop this. Don't forget, we're all hunter-gatherers. So what does a hunter-gatherer do when it's stressed? It tries to consume as much calorie as possible. So our hormones, the ghrelin um, and others in our body, shift to want calories. We eat sugar and fat when we're stressed, and then we conserve it in our bodies as fat. That's the reason why we've got obesity, it's not because there's a new chicken things out there and there's lots of things. It's because we've got a stressed nation and stress creates obesity and it creates a, a need for eating. Poor diet is, um, and a bit, sorry, smoking is because we've become impulsive in our behavior. And inactivity is our body conserving energy as much as we possibly can when we're stressed because we need it when we need it. So our bodies are totally doing what they expect to do but unfortunately, it's creating the epidemic. So if we look at all of that, that chronic stress leads to stress hormones and those, and then this chronic inflammation. The immune system then says, I'm stressed. I need to now ramp up, be prepared for battle, be prepared for what is going to happen because I'm stressed, I'm a hunter-gatherer. And that chronic inflammation starts to eat away at our body. So we're getting an epidemic of this, which we can measure in children as young as six, who are overweight, who are stressed, who are, who are, who are lonely, who are inactive. And these are the conditions that underlie, that um, chronic stress underlies everything. All the Western diseases that we're dealing with. Dementia is an inflammatory process that causes damage to the brain. Obesity, we've said, anxiety, depression is inflammation of the brain. Diabetes is inflammation. Cardiovascular disease was the first disease to understand about inflammation. Cancers, arthritis. They all have this chronic inflammation. We're having this epidemic. And you trace it back, it's stress, trace that back, and it's our disconnection from being a hunter-gatherer. Loneliness, outdoors, not outdoors, and having no purpose. So what about just staying walking? So let's just think about our parks as a place for walking. We've already seen that if you disconnect people from nature, your brain changes, and that creates a stress and lack of resilience. Let's have a quick look at here. Nobody may recognize that at all. Um, I'm sure there's none of that around here. But visceral fat was the body's way of saving energy. It's not that bit. It's that bit inside, the white bit, right inside. Not the outside white bit, which is a, vis which is a subcutaneous fat, but the visceral fat. And visceral fat is there as an emergency supply of energy when you're stressed. And we've got loads of it in the UK. And it's causing more damage than pretty much anything else. It's highly toxic. It's only meant to be there for temporarily. When you walk, it's the orange lines. It's the visceral fat that goes the first, because things are now OK. The subcutaneous fat goes a little bit. These people didn't lose any weight. 90, 60 minutes a day of walking, no weight loss, but they lost their visceral fat. So people outdoors moving 
create huge benefits, even though we may not see it inside. Every time you clench your muscles and you move, you start to take an um, inflammatory response goes down because you get all these myokines, which are like statins, really, that go around the body. So constant movement creates this anti-inflammatory. And then let's go down to the real nitty-gritty right inside the cell to understand, as Hunter gathers, how far away we've gone from where we should have been. So here's a mitochondria. Um, the my who's, who's, who knows about mitochondria? Who's heard of mitochondria? Yes, look at that. That's great. Go to doctors. They don't know what's that. Oh, mitochondria. Didn't do that in medical school sometime, but no. Mitochondria are the batteries. As you know, you find it in pretty much small in trees. You find it in plants. You find it in pretty much all eukaryotes. The mitochondria is a way of creating it's an energy. It's a battery. It's run on electricity, Krebs cycle. Here we have sedentary, high fat, or actually just high calorie, and stress. Mitochondria charges up, inner outer membrane, potential difference. This is the mitochondria now sitting there with you. But you're not moving. You can't hold it anymore. I'm sorry. Electrons are going to start leaking out because your mitochondria are overcharged. Cortisol is making it a bit unstable, and you're not moving. So these free radicals or electrons come out from that, and they start to cause damage on that mitochondria. So that mitochondria has got a couple of holes punched in the DNA, so that will end. Those free radicals start to move out. The more you're sedentary, the less you move, the more that's happening. So sedentary behavior is not a passive behavior. It's actively destroying the body. As soon as you become active, inner and outer membrane potential difference goes down, just like overcharging a battery when it goes warm. And a lot of antioxidants come up. No more free radicals, more mitochondria, healthier cell. And what happens to those, those, um, those um, free radicals? They go and hit the end of the chromosome. So let me just give you a very quick lecture on this one for one minute. The chromosomes divide every time our cells divide. And we replace that cell with a new cell. At the age of 28, I'm afraid not all those cells are replaced, and you start to get less and less cells. You might notice your skin not looking quite so good, your muscles starting to frizzle out, your brain starting to shrink, and that's called aging. It's, uh, <laughs> so 28 is the magic age. The reason why is because these telomeres, which nobody knew about until Elizabeth Blackwell at University of California got the Nobel Prize to understanding that those longer those telomeres are, the more that cell can divide and therefore be replaced. And the shorter it is, the less it will be divided. So if you've got lots of free radicals coming because you've got a stressed childhood, you're obese and you're sedentary and you're playing your Xbox all the time, those children will have shorter telomeres by the time they're teenagers and they've got no hope of living a longer life. Except if you take away that stress and you increase physical activity, you can actually make those telomeres go longer. So that is a real, you know, you can't get more fundamental than that. And that's why the connection to nature, being outdoors and being active is so utterly and totally important. And what's more, green exercise, when you look at it, increases more telomerase, which makes those telomeres longer, than exercise in the gym. This was a study done, um, I can't remember, European Journal of Public Health. We're starting to understand that this fact of green and stress reduction is so, so important. So it's not just a physical activity, it's being outdoors on that, and that goes to the bottom. So we've got this disease of chronic inflammation, and I, as a doctor, have got nothing to offer in my medicine cabinet apart from Fitterix. <laughs> because Fitterix deals with this, but my statins don't, my insulin doesn't, or my ACE inhibitors don't do it, Medicine, um, surgery doesn't do it. Chronic inflammation is the ba basis of all our problems that are developing. And we now know that life expectancy in women in deprived areas is just starting to go down. We know it's flatlined, but that's because we're starting to see there. So in affluent women, it's going up a little bit. In deprived communities, we're starting to see the first decline for hundreds of years, whatever. 
So let's just see what happened. You've got these people all at home, working, stressed out, disconnected from place, to nature, purpose, poor health behaviours, chronic stress, mitochondrial damage, you're an expert of all of that, cardiovascular disease, diabetes. Let's look at it another way. If you have that disconnection, chronic stress, inactivity, then your brain isn't working because the energy is in for your immune system. Poor concentration for children and adults, tiredness, irritability, addiction, depression, weakness, chronic inflammation. You can start to see societal problems developing because of this problem we're getting right at the top. Unsafe streets, because more people are using their cars, poor air quality, reduced learning for school, reduced productivity hugely in workplace, dependence of elderly because people have now unable to move around because they haven't been outdoors, less volunteering, isolation, obesity. See, all these things stem from this disconnection. It's not just an isolated nice to have. This is now fundamental, not just to the individual, but to society. And there we are. Um, sorry. And then when we become active and we get nature connected, then you start to see confidence, concentration less. You start to see un society connect together. So a, a community that's got no connection to nature is going to be more indoors. We know that people connect to each other when they're in nature more than when they're on a concrete place or where there's no nature. So nature brings that connection to people together. So nature also creates purpose because we know who we are. We know we belong. So there's no coincidence that place is right in the center of this. And this is a fundamental part of health. Even our brains change when we go outdoors and we connect to nature. Our hippocampus increases by 20%. That's the seat of learning and behavior. So that's where children and adults are going to benefit. Um, I've often given you this, and those who worked in natural England, this has been my slide I've had for a long time. Um, but I will just do it for those who haven't seen it, just to see where the problems are. Ed, up in the top left-hand corner, is eight. Okay. On the bottom right is his great-grandfather. In Sheffield great-grandfather had six miles he could roam around and he could come back when it was dark. That's it. No mobile phones. Eight years old. Can you imagine sending your child of eight years old off into six miles away? And he went to the woods, they went played football, they did loads of things. Ed's grandfather, 50s, he could go out for a mile to the woods, come back when it's dark. Ed's mother, 70s, starting to change, come back at tea time, but only go down to the swimming pool or to the local park. And then Ed is locked indoors. He might be able to go line of sight. And now, that was done a few years ago, Ed will be, an eight-year-old will be absolutely planted indoors because of fear of going out and busyness and everything. And a strange mix has come into this world. And we we're doing some work in Norway, and I thought, well, no, Norwegians, they've got it all right. No, nope, that's all changed as well. They're all going into their bedrooms again. So all that Norwegian spirit of being outdoors is already being affected. So it's getting everywhere. And you imagine that playground of that Ed's great-grandfather, and many of you all know that. Can you imagine what's happening to his mitochondrion telomeres, bursting to the seams of goodness and health? And actually, I mentioned about how our bodies are 43% bacteria. They are hugely important about the inflammation. They calm the inflammation down. So get them wrong, and you start to also create problems. So when we talked about kind of get people outdoors, it used to be that. Swimming pools, tennis courts, football pitches. And that was kind of, in our world, the exercise referral. Didn't work. It's been stopped. No more commissioning of that. Because 80% of people say, I don't like to be in the gym. And they just clear off. And by the time you get to six weeks, actually no change has happened. Then we got the health walks in the green gyms, which I'm proud to be part of, park runs, Zumba classes, all of those things coming through. This is the social prescribing. This is where the community is now getting people outdoors. And we're starting to get organized groups. That's where we are now. But that's still not going to create this cultural change that we need. The cultural change comes when everybody takes responsibility, not just the health walk leader or the Zumba class leader or the organization delivering this. 
or the wildlife trust delivering that. It's when the mum and dad take ownership of their family. It's when the teacher talks about to their children, where the GP talks to the patients, the, the hairdresser talks to her clients, the workplace manager talks to their people. They talk about a cultural change that everybody has to be active and be outdoors, and it's absolutely fundamental. And if there's a cultural shift, then we'll start to see things completely change. So everybody has that responsibility. It's not the organisations, which, which is great where we are here now. And social prescribing, a billion pounds has gone in to getting link workers into every primary care network. And primary care networks, the new face of the NHS started in July. There are thousands of them, about 40,000 population. And they'll take over from CCGs, you know, just when you thought you got it all sorted. They love to change it all around. <laughs> But there is huge potential. But let's see what we can do on here, this social movement. So I'm just said about, I'm a GP still, and I've been worked, worked at Natural England um, for a long time, but also set up intelligent health. I thought, how can we get system change in a place? And we made it a game. Because people see things as a means to an end. What's an end in someone's life? It's their children, it's their family, it's enjoyment. It's not going to nature, it's not being active, it's not even being healthy. A lot of patients I've got actually don't care about being healthy, they just want to be happy. They want a purpose in their life. So let's use the children. We create a game and we get, give children little fobs and we put fob readers on lampposts all around the place in the parks and the green spaces. So here's Barnsley, 240,000 population. They're all the little beat boxes, all carefully placed in places where we want that population of Barnsley to go and start to change. And go to the new parks, go to the cycleways, go to the footpaths, go to the canal areas. We got, within a week, 24,671 people playing. Half children, half parents, half grandchildren, and then you've got the grandparents and aunts and uncles. From deprivation, 42% were in the bottom 20%. So we got the very deprived communities. We've had over a million people now playing this game. It's a very simple game, 13% of the entire population from deprived. But we get them out for the first time. And the children are the ones pulling the parents because they want points for their school team. They want points for their own team. And it's fun. So if we're going to get Amy into nature, the little fob it doesn't have to have a fob because we can't do that beat the street everywhere. But we show we can. We can get her into nature because it's not nature she's going for, it's the game. When the game gets her there, she looks around and we put lots of events on for the, for the council and they say, wow, I've never been here and it's only a 10-minute walk from my house. I have only didn't realise there was a canal here. People who've lived in places had no idea. So let's just do something in, in national parks. We know this is a medical emergency. We've seen it. And medicine can't treat this chronic inflammation. So children are the place we have to start with. Yes, we can do the social prescribing, but we need to listen to them. And we've got to say, <coughs> we've got to do this and make it really urgent. Nature education, children being outdoors. I talk about nature education. It sounds really naff, but doing so that people know about what's local. Create this social movement so visiting a park is a norm. What do people want? Create local groups in a local area. I know all of this, and I know Alison's working very hard with all of you to try and say, how do we create health? But we've got to listen to what people really want, and it won't be the nature, and it won't be the health, I'm afraid, but what it will be was an experience they love, and we have to understand by listening. Social prescribing, loads of opportunities, but still we've got to get that transport thing sorted out. So let's get that transport thing sorted out if people have to go out into the park. So this has got to be a real can-do. Whether you like it or not, London's National Park, some of you might freeze at that, some of you might be enthusiastic. But can't we do our own, well, not your own? Can't we have a People's National Park where every square three metres in someone's garden is a little bit of that People's National Park? People can own a little bit of it, look after it, and add it all up, and you'd have the biggest national park in the world. Is that things that we can do to actually try and make sure the park comes to the people as well as the people coming to the park? But create that purpose, create people coming together, people, purpose, place, going right from the beginning. And then finally, um, 
are just saying we can do it. 15 years ago, not a single doctor knew the, um, the physical activity guidelines. 90% um, can today because we finally got together and said, let's put it in the curriculum for every medical student. Let's get every GP trained up. Let's do everything to get that right. So we have a medical emergency. Isolation, disconnection to nature and lack of purpose create is chronic stress, which goes on to chronic inflammation, which goes on to all our problems. Children have to be connected to their own natural world. We've got to do it in a massive way, in a big government way, um, and the national parks can lead on it. And get the children, perhaps, to get the parents and grandparents. But I think starting with the children is going to be a great place to start. Thank you very much.